Okay, everybody, let's work on our second problem of the day. This time, we're going to be talking about open systems, because most of the systems we work with as chemies really are open ones. And what we're going to look at with today's open systems is we are going to derive the open system energy balance for a bunch of really common process equipment so that we can just reuse these equations that we derive over and over and over and over and over, uh, and we don't have to redo them every single time. We don't have to think about it. So this is going to start with you going on a scavenger hunt. And what I mean by the scavenger hunt is I want you to get a hold of a camera. It could be your phone camera. It could be your friend's phone camera, whatever. And I want you to go out and take pictures of common process equipment and then email it to me at m-v-i-g-e-a-n-t at bucknell.edu. Um, or you can drop it into the class Slack. Please do so before class time so we can use these pictures in class time. And what are you looking for pictures of? I want you to find, not on the internet, in real life, if at all possible, pictures of a heat exchanger, a pump, a compressor, a valve, um, a nozzle, um, any of those things, or all of those things. And tell me which one you think it is that you're sending to me and uh, send them to me, <coughs> like I said, either in email or in Slack so I can get that. And then our problem is I'm going to put up a bunch of these pictures and we're going to look at them and we're going to decide how to simplify the energy balance for that case. All right, folks, let's talk about an overall open system energy balance that we can use as a starting point to simplify for our individual pieces of process equipment that we're about to consider. Now, for this open system energy balance, we are not going to assume that our uh, system has any particular number of inlets or outlets. So uh, this can work if we have lots of things coming in, lots of things going out. It also works if we have one. But we are going to start by assuming it's steady state. So the left hand side is going to start as a zero. And we're also going to assume no reactions. So what, uh, what travels with the inlets? Well, the thing that travels with each inlet um, is uh, the enthalpy of that incoming stream, the kinetic energy of that incoming stream, and the potential energy of that incoming stream. And uh, all of that has to be multiplied by the size of that stream. In this case, we'll talk about mass, because mass is conserved. And uh, we would put this term in over and over again for each of the inlets we might have for our system. Then we got to subtract off what's leaving our system. So it's that same uh, idea, those same enthalpy, uh, kinetic energy, uh, potential energy uh, for each of the outlets. Okay, and uh, again, we're keeping in mind that we might have three inlets and four outlets, and they might all be different sizes from each other. This equation works with that. We're going to need two more terms now that we've got these in here, and that is we're going to need heat. Uh, keep in mind heat, we can add five or six heat terms if we need to, um, and shaft work. Uh, and again, we could add multiple terms for that if we need to. The dot on top means that it's a rate, and the line underneath means it's dependent on the size of the system. Okay, so if we have a couple special conditions met, one, no kinetic or potential energy changes, two, uh, we have um, just one inlet and just one outlet, so say it's a pump, that's kind of common. Um, then we can jump to a, a version of this that is just enthalpy, heat, and work. And we can turn the uh, H in minus H out. We can flip it to the other side of the equation and write it as delta H. So we'll see this over and over. And we can write this as an extensive equation that is based on the size of the process. So it's got M dot in it and it's mass dependent, it's dependent on how many kilograms of stuff we've gone through, or we can actually divide through by the mass and write it as delta H equals Q plus WS, which is then not dependent on the size of the system. It's just in terms of, say, kilojoules per kilogram. Next up, what I'd like you to do is start in this order to go through each of these unit operations and simplify that overall open system energy balance for that unit operation, okay? And then when we agree that we have simplifications that we like, uh, we can just most of the time use them over and over and over again, uh, and uh, we don't have to re-derive it every single time. 
I'm gonna note heat uh, heat exchanger. We're gonna do uh, a bigger problem on that uh, tomorrow. That'll be our uh, problem of the day for the next day. So you can just start thinking about setting that up, but try and get through all the rest of them as today's problem of the day.